In this Blender tutorial, we will learn how to use Ocean Modifier along with Dynamic Paint. With this technique, a ship can interact directly with the ocean water, and we get a water trail like this, behind the ship. So let us get started with this scene, where we have added a simple ship model. We will first create an ocean here. So go to the Add menu and add a plane. To convert it into an ocean, go to the Modifiers tab, and add one, Ocean Modifier. We will go with the default values, but let us change these two resolution values to 12. Then expand the wave section. We will change the scale factor to 0.5. And under the section called Spectrum, by default the Turbulent Ocean is selected. You can definitely use this option, but it will create a lot of waves all around the ocean, which will interact heavily with the dynamic paint. So it will look better if we use an option like Established Ocean or Shallow Water. And to animate the wave pattern, we need to keyframe and animate this time value, so let us keyframe this. Then go to the last frame. We can change this to say 10, and we need a keyframe here as well. This will have a Bezier type interpolation by default, with a slow start and a slow ending, but instead of that, we want to give it a simple linear transformation. So we have to go to the graph editor from here. Then on this curve, right click here, and we have to change this interpolation type to linear. Then we can go back to the viewport and start the animation from the very beginning. We can see the ocean simulation as expected. Now we will also add a dynamic paint physics so that the ship can interact directly with this water. So let us stop this and go to the first frame. Then in the physics tab, we have to enable the dynamic paint. This type field should be canvas and we need to add a canvas for the next step. So this is our canvas surface. And we need to change the surface type to waves. We will go with all these default options. Let's then add one more surface to this. We're going little fast here, because we have created a detailed tutorial separately for dynamic paint. And there is also another tutorial on Ocean Modifier in Blender. You can watch them if you are new to this, the links are given in the video description below. So we have created two different surfaces for this canvas. For this first one, the surface type is waves. And for the second surface, the surface type should be paint. And for this surface, we have to enable the spread option under effects. Let us then expand this. We will reduce the speed factor to say 0.3. This actually determines how fast the spread effect moves on the canvas once a displacement starts happening. We will see this in action later, let us first complete this part. In this output section, we can see two vertex maps, we need to click on these plus buttons to enable them. This will create two entries in the color attributes, as we can see here. We will discover how to actually use them, but before that, we have to enable dynamic paint also for the ship. So select the ship and go to the physics tab. Enable dynamic paint here, but this time, the type field should be brush. We have to then add a brush, and we're good to go with these default options. Now, we have to dip the ship slightly under the ocean water. So let us push it down a little bit in the Z direction. Or in the object properties, we can directly enter a value like 1.5. And we also need to animate the ship from one end to the other. So for frame number one, let us take the ship to this end of the ocean. And we need to keyframe this Y location. Then go to the end of the animation. And let's move it to the other end like this. We need to keyframe this as well. So we are done with the physics and the animation part. If we now run the animation, we will see that the ship may be interacting with the ocean water, but the interaction is not quite visible, we don't see the kind of water trail that we expect here. We can make it visible by using the color attributes. We have to first click on this arrow button, and then select this attribute option. Now we can see a white trail behind the ship, as it should be. So it proves that the dynamic paint physics is working. The water trail is created by the dynamic paint. Let us run it from the beginning. In this attribute display mode, we can see the vertex color attributes created by the dynamic paint. We have to utilize this attribute color to create a suitable material, so that the water trail gets visible in the output. So this method depends a lot on appropriate material setup. Let us stop this and switch over to the rendered view mode. Then select the ocean and go to the materials tab. Let's create a new material. Now, we have to customize this ocean material through shader editor. So split the screen like this with two views side by side 
and we need to open a shader editor on this side. Right now, we have a principled BSDF for this default material. We need to manipulate this base color part. So go to the Add menu and add a node called Color Attribute. Here, in this drop-down list, we can see two maps, the same two maps that are created by the dynamic paint. We can see them here as well, under the Color Attributes. So out of these two, let us select the wet map. And we need to connect it to the base color input of the principled BSDF. As a result, we can see that the ocean has got a distinct color for the water trail behind the ship, as expected. So this way, we need to set up a material that brings out the effect of the dynamic paint. But this is only a basic setup, we need to further improve on this material, we need to add some noise textures to create foam around this water trail, it will then look even better, and more realistic. So a lot of fine tuning needs to be done here, to develop the final node tree from this elementary setup, and we will get a material like this. Here you can pause the video and note down these node details. We have used two different color attribute nodes together, and we have also used two noise texture nodes. And this entire setup is then directed to the FAC input of this mix shader node, which is adding these two principled BSDF. This one is for the ocean color, and this is for the foam or the water trail. You can customize these nodes as per your requirement, it is just an example. With this node setup, we will get a material like this. As you can see here, the water trail behind the ship looks nice and realistic due to the use of a noise texture. We are almost done with this, let us run it once from the beginning. So you can use dynamic paint with an ocean modifier in this way, and the object will interact nicely with the ocean surface. Let us look from the top. You can customize the settings for the dynamic paint or the ocean modifier. If you need more water displacements, you need to dip the ship further into the ocean. We can now render the scene and get the final output. So that was how to use dynamic paint with ocean modifier. I hope you like this tutorial. Stay tuned for more such stuff. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.